We'll bring in our senior political analyst, Marwan Bashara, joining us here in the studio. So obviously, I mean, Algeria will be hugely disappointed being the ones that put forward this draft resolution, Marwan. But on the point um, about the U.S., this resolution was really widely supported by all U.N. members. So does this move the U.S. vetoing the resolution isolated even more at the U.N.? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think... Generally speaking, the United States has grown more isolated around the world, including after Ukraine. But nowhere is it as isolated as it is on the question of Palestine. Because at the end of the day, the United States is still a prosperous leader in the world. It's a mighty country. It's a rich country. And, uh, you know, with, with tens of bases all over the world, it's, it's just it's present. And it's popular in many countries when it comes to Palestine. It has brought on itself isolation in order to be at the service of Israel. And in this case, at the service of an Israeli government that is basically genocidal, that's fanatic, that's neo-fascist, that Biden himself is demanding that this government changes. And at the same time, he goes into the United Nations and defends this government and shoots down a very simple and noble idea which is the right of self-determination, the inalienable right of self-determination of, of a people. Now, it was, or it has become petty when the United States, you look at, a, at the 193 countries around the world and you say the Palestinians that helped establish different countries in the Middle East itself, the Palestinians who are some of the most educated people in the world with the highest literacy, the Palestinians who were able to build a society and an authority under occupation, those Palestinians are not ready to have a state, really? So the justification for the American decision is just false and transparently so. Now, there is this understanding that the Americans tried to push quite strongly that they support the idea, the principle, the vision of a Palestinian state, but this is not the time. But as the Palestinians have been saying again and again, when is the time? I mean, since 1993, the Americans have been making the Palestinians and the Arabs promises that they never fulfill. For three decades, the United States supervised, sponsored a peace process between Palestinians and Israelis, and it always took the Israel's line. It was the Israeli lawyer, the Israel advocate in the negotiations. And now, once again, it insists that it's only the United States that can bring about a two-state solution and peace in the Middle East, except this time, they want, to, they want to have more Arab countries pay a higher price in order for Israel to be satisfied. This genocidal Israel should be rewarded for its genocide with more recognition, more aid, more sponsorship, more arms, and more di diplomatic protection. This is, doesn't make sense for much of the international community and for those people who are voting today, 12 of them. I mean, how do you explain what Shihab was just talking about a moment ago when he was saying that the U.S. was actually threatening to pull the funding from the United Nations if this vote were to go ahead? Why is this so concerning for the U.S.? What worries them about this? It's the thing uh, that has to do, when it comes to do with Israel and the Middle East, as I was mentioning earlier, it's my way or the highway. That's the United States and it's Pax Americana in the Middle East. So when it comes to inter its interest and Israel's interest, things have to be done the American way. Otherwise, the United States will veto whatever the resolution is and will send armadas to the East Mediterranean and will, in fact, get involved in yet another war or at least in a military campaign, as we've just seen a few days ago, when they got involved militarily in the Middle East in defense of Israel. I mean, suddenly the United States is also dragging along the UK and France and so on and so forth. The old imperial powers, the old colonial powers are back in the Middle East fighting. For whom? For what? Why now? So it's this, this, this idea, this phrase, this American phrase, you know, it's called inside baseball, my way or the highway, basically says either I run the show or no one is going to run the show. Either I will be managing the party, or I'll be the party pooper, basically. And that's what happens at the United Nations. Now, why is this, at, at this critical moment, why is this important, and why it is reckless on the part of the United States? It's because the support for Palestine is across the board around the world. Mm -hmm. In 
the world societies and among the world governments. The governments who don't dare, it's just because they've been strong armed by the United States. The absolute majority of people and countries in the, United, in the, in the world today support the Palestinians. In fact, the Palestinian cause has never been popular around the world. Just when Palestine itself has been suffering more than ever before in its history. Just look at what's happening in Gaza, in the West Bank, in Jerusalem, and so on and so forth. So uh, what are we to make of then the numbers that we saw today? Is it significant that we had countries like France, for example, vote in favor of this resolution? Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as we've heard from our correspondent, the fact that a good number of countries now who usually abstain voted for tells you that the UN Security Council is the terror council, in the words of the Israeli ambassador. And by the way, because we, we, you know, we broadcast this, we are responsible as Al Jazeera, we broadcast this stuff. And sometimes, or not sometimes, a lot of times, politicians lie, right? I mean, they lie for their countries, especially with diplomats, that's what they do, their job is to sometimes lie for their country. But not one thing, the Israeli ambassador said today was correct. Not one thing, factually and otherwise. Everything from how countries become independent, how countries became accepted in the international community, how Israel became accepted as a member of the international community after it committed terror and genocide in Palestine in 1947 to 1949, it was accepted as a member. It wasn't just doing some terror actions here and there. It was committing genocide in Palestine, and it, yet it was recognized as a member of the United Nations. Most of the countries in the South who gained their independence from colonial powers did so but with the use of force. Only a few gained their independence peacefully because the imperial powers decided to be, you know, this, it's time to go. So everything he was saying today was just humbug, total BS, but it passed. But be that as it may, Israel is totally isolated, like the United States is totally isolated. And apparently, con uh, isolation is a bit contagious between Israel and the United States. What you worry about here is that the United States is too important of a country around the world. It is too important of a country. It is a superpower. And it does have a huge role to play in the Middle East. And it is sad, it's a sad day when the Biden administration boxes itself in behind the Netanyahu government, vetoes again a United Nations Security Council when right. the United States is supposed to be leading the way for a true peace based on the recognition of Palestinian rights for self-determination. All right, Marwan, thank you so much. Well, Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.